Welcome back. Today we have another episode of almost 30, essentially things that I just wanna, you know, fix about my life before I turn 30 next year, which is insane. I used to always picture what my 30s would be like, like living my 13 going on 30 Jennifer Gardner life. Like I genuinely always pictured me in my 30 being so confident, sexy, sure of myself. I have said it in the first two episodes, but I really was not in the best place at the beginning of this year. And one of the main things that I kind of like kicked to the back burner was taking care of my body. I'm not even gonna say like my workouts, my, like, my health, my diet, like none of, I was just not taking care of my body. So this time around, I wanted to have a different approach to getting back into a healthy routine or even a fitness routine. And that was simply to just move, like literally just move my body, even if that is a 30 minute walk, um, something where before I would have felt like it wasn't good enough and I would have talked myself out of doing it, like just being an active person and doing it for my mental health not to look a certain way. While I was outlining this video, I had an idea and I was like, I don't know if this is cheesy, but I really didn't want anyone to think I was trying to tell them what to do or tips that like y'all think you should do. I really wanted to keep it to myself. So I had the idea of why don't I write a letter to myself 10 years ago, because 10 years ago I was 19. I never have talked about this because I never wanted to throw the word eating disorder around because personally I was never, you know, clinically diagnosed by a doctor. However, I know in my heart that I've definitely struggled in a very unhealthy way, in a very toxic way with my relationship with food and exercise in the past. Um, specifically around when I was 20 or 21, I lost a shit ton of weight and I had no idea that I wasn't doing it in a healthy way. Like I genuinely didn't realize that I had a disordered way of viewing food. I genuinely just thought I was eating clean and being quote healthy. And it was until years later when I actually lost weight in a more healthy way, I realized then like years later, oh wow, Alicia, you were definitely, you had an eating disorder. Like just cause a doctor didn't diagnose you doesn't mean that it isn't true. I'm saying all this to say I've done extreme, I've done it in an unhealthy way. And here at 29, I feel like I've learned so much about my body and how I just need to treat it right. So I wrote a letter to my 19 year old self. Dear 19 year old Alicia. Yes, I know my A's look like Z's. I've heard it my entire life. Dear 19 year old Alicia, you're about to enter your 20s. And as exciting as that is, the next 10 years, you're really gonna struggle with loving yourself and your body. Yeah, I know you thought you were past that, but spoiler alert, it actually gets worse. Instead, I'm gonna give you a list of advice and I'm also gonna explain the why behind it. Cause I know you bitch, you hate when people don't explain why we shouldn't do things. But if you can learn these things sooner than later, it will save you a lot of hurt and pain. I know how stubborn you are, so I'm not just gonna give you a list of things to do and not to do. Number one, Food is fuel for your body. If you eat shit, you will feel like shit. You are gonna struggle so much because it's gonna seem like every single person in your life can eat fast food for every single freaking meal and it not affect them. And for whatever reason, it affects you and that it's not fair. But the quicker you can get that out of your head that it's quote, not fair that they get to have junk food and it feels like you can't because um, you know, maybe you finally take a food sensitivity test and realize that you're actually slightly allergic to a lot. And just like your mom's warned you for years, um, we have sensitive stomachs and there's certain foods that don't like us. So the sooner you can accept that, um, you'll be way happier off. And also just realizing how much better you feel when you eat well. Number two. Ditch the fucking scale. In the future, you don't even own a scale because you used to give that number so much power and you realize that everything is about how you feel and not what a number says on a scale. Getting rid of my scale was life changing. Three years ago, I did this and I've never looked back. Like I've never wanted to have it back because again, I used to obsess over it. If I like lost one pound, I'd be so happy. If I gained one pound, I would have the worst week of my life. Instantly, the power that number had on me was gone the second I realize that it doesn't matter. I never look at someone and go, wow, they're clearly X amount of weight. Like, no. And if people do, they're fucking psychotic. I just finished my workout. We're not going off of how we look. We're going off how we feel. And right now I feel really good because I pushed myself when I didn't think I could do it. And I'm exhausted. Number three, don't restrict or starve yourself. 
Unfortunately, you're gonna try both of these things and it's just gonna backfire. You're gonna have to learn the hard way. No restricting. Again, refer to number one, food is fuel. Number four, don't bother taking progress pics. It's not that you can't take them because I know how much you love documenting your life. You can take them, just don't obsess about them weekly. Never do them weekly. If anything, do them a few times a year. I do think it's important to look back and see how far you've come and the progress you've made. However, I know you bitch. You're gonna obsess over every little inch of your body. Which leads me to my next one. Number five. Everything on Instagram is fake. Trainers wear butt pads to sell leggings and most baddies have BBLs or boob jobs. And look, there's nothing wrong with plastic surgery, but don't wonder why you don't have their curves. Lighting, self-tanner angles are everything. Also, you are definitely gonna be going on a huge unfollow and muting spree on Instagram. And you know what? Do not feel bad about it. If you wanna unfollow someone because they don't make you feel good, we all know social media can be a lot and can be fake and we all compare ourselves. It's nothing against the people, you know? But if you need to unfollow, just unfollow. So again, don't obsess and don't compare. I mentioned in my first almost 30 video how I felt like I needed to break up with myself because my inner voice can just be like very critical and like hard on myself. And I feel like right now I'm experiencing that because I'm not feel like I just don't feel good. I guess even if <laughs> even if this video is just to show that like I also struggle with this shit, like maybe that's the point of this video. Maybe it's better that it's all over the place because I feel like that's how my brain can be sometimes. Like some days I'm so I feel so confident and hot and other days I just don't. Sometimes it's hard for me to get going again because I compare myself to when I could run for like an hour straight. It's like a com I'm competitive with my old self and like it it just like ah uh, i don't know if anyone else is like that who number six spoiler alert it's gonna become trendy to have curves even though this will give you a huge boost of confidence because you're used to only petite double zero sizes being praised and a lot of your friends are very small and petite i wish you would learn to love those thighs on your own and not just because the rest of the world now decides they're sexy. Number seven, speaking of confidence, confidence is what's sexy. I'm gonna be honest, yes, you will still not love the cellulite on your legs, but guess what? It doesn't matter. I know you don't believe me because that's one of your biggest insecurities, but you're confident and hot as hell, just exactly as you are. And that's exactly why you made your clothing brand Parallel Apparel, because it reminds you that you are sexy as is, even with that cellulite that you've spent years hiding. And my top is Parallel Apparel, our black square neck top. There is truly no other top that makes me feel like snatched and hot. And like, like today was one of those days where I was like, oh, I don't want to wear a cropped like workout top. Um, so I knew, I was like, grab this, you're gonna feel fucking good. Like, grab this, you will feel good. And I do. Like, I also, save your money on the cellulite treatments because those places are gonna scam you, bitch. <laughs> it's true. Number eight, get into therapy. Cause right now you're using food to help you cope with all of your stress and trust me, it is life-changing. Remember number one, food is fuel. There's other ways to deal with your stress and anxiety. I promise you. You're gonna find out a lot of things about yourself in therapy, but one of them is that you desperately need more hobbies. And one of those can be tennis, which is a great way to get a workout in. And it's something you actually enjoy. He's kicking my ass. <laughs> This has seriously been game changing when it comes to getting back into a routine. Cause if you are like me, you're so hard on yourself. You always compare yourself to where you used to be when you were super strong. Find something you enjoy doing that is active, whether that's going for a hike with your friends, going for a walk, um, listening to, a, you know, your hot girl walk, listening to a podcast, tennis, um, whatever it is. Today was hard. Find it. Ah, oh, this one's hard. Number nine, um, even at your lowest weight that you worked so hard to get at, you won't be happy and you'll have more body dysmorphia than than you've ever had. You'll be miserable, your hormones will be imbalanced, you'll go to plenty of doctors trying to figure out what's wrong until you realize that it's your body telling you it's in a fight or flight mode and it can't go on anymore like this. Number 10, don't bother. Just don't bother with the fad diets. Just cause it's a vegan brownie doesn't mean it's healthy for you. I know you're exhausted and tired of trying to find what works for your body, but all of that frustration will lead you to a nutritionist who actually changes your life because he finally teaches you that food is fuel. And for the first time in your life, you finally have a good relationship with food. Number 11, the bite of cake is so worth it when you're celebrating something. If it's your friend's engagement, their birthday, remember the 80-20 rule. 
80% of the time, be on your shit. Some of your favorite memories with your friends will be when you're blackout drunk at Denny's at 2 a.m. eating burgers and fries. Enjoy it. It's all about balance. I didn't realize that I didn't end it, um, but I kind of like that I didn't because I feel like, I don't know, it, it kind of shows that it's a daily reminder and like there's always going to be new things that we're learning and stuff. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Almost 30. I will see you guys really soon with a new video and I love you all so much. Mwah! Hehehe. <laughs>